And welcome back. George Norrie along with R.J. Spina. R.J., why are the exercises so important? Well, they, they bring about the clarity of detachment. So uh, otherwise, we, we keep referring to things as my thoughts, my feelings, uh, the things that I did. There's ownership to these things, and this is part of the, the, the identification with the programs that have been impl- implemented. So through the exercises, you, you bring these things to your conscious mind, and you actually tangibly realize that they're not you. And this is why these exercises are superior. The book itself is superior to, to traditional therapy and psychotherapy because that is just the regurgitation. It's still your story, my thoughts, my experiences. This is what happened to me. We never actually let go and transcend these things because we never actually see them through the pure eyes of awareness because we're too identified with the things that have been implanted in, into our mind. So it, it's essential because once you do that and you gain that detachment, you realize it's not you, and then you're finally free of the program. Are these practices being done all over the planet by different people, different groups, shamans, for example? I don't know if there's... A, that's a great question, George. I don't know if there's ever been a, a formalized way, a repeatable and robust process like that, that is laid out in the book. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a great question. The, the only thing I know is that the people that do this, they've never felt this good in their lives. And it, it, because it's so much more effective because of what I thought, I, you know, I hope, well, let's see. These teachings will far outlive my physical body, but I hope that I hope that all these works that are left behind by me actually end up being all over the globe because I think it's the key to to our transcendence. How did you know how to do this for yourself when you were going through your health issues? Well, the, the I mean, did anybody help you? No, no. The the the, the best answer that I can give is that. <clears throat> When, when you ever actually do reach self-realization or enlightenment, when you, have, when you have full communion with who and what you really are, and you do it in any lifetime, there's, there's a muscle memory. Uh, and, and you know it, these things just come back to you. And so all of a sudden, it's just like I just knew what to do. It was the same with my healing. It's not the first time I put a destroyed body. It's not the first time I put my destroyed body back together. So it just it just came back to me. I think it's truly a muscle memory, George. And we and there goes that subconscious that we're talking mm-hmm. about, how it's embedded there. So I, I think it, I call all of these things a, a remembrance. And when I teach these things to people, when I'm doing the courses and the classes, and I say these things like that you and I are talking about these, uh, you know, enlightened metaphysics, the. the the look on everyone's face is like, oh, yeah, of course. It's almost like they're remembering just as I'm sharing it. I think we all know these things, and I think for me it's just that I, I woke myself back up so I could remember. It's amazing. To the phones we go, Tony, truck driving in Texas. Let's get us started. Hey, Tone. Hi, George. Nice talking to you again, buddy. You too. Ho- hope you are well. Oh, everything is beautiful, my friend. Um, I have a question. I have two if we have time. Okay. The first one is, is a fear of heights subconsciously in your mind? Fear of heights. What do you think, RJ? Yeah, I mean, most most of us have fears, and all fears are are irrational. Fears are only foment in the absence of the divine. So in other words, it's an identification of the ego mind identity, which can come from the subconscious pattern mind, which means it's probably something that occurred before. And it's never been truly, uh, you've never detached from it, let go of it, so it remains. And I've worked with lots of people that have, um, you know, fears about things that really have nothing to do with anything that's happened in this life. So, yeah, they, they, they get embedded and we carry them forward until we realize through detachment that, it, that that experience, even if we did die from falling or something like that, that it's not us, that it was just an experience, and then that's when it's so, yeah, it's, it's definitely embedded within the subconscious mind. Let's go for your second question, Tony. Go ahead. Okay, like you say, um, things are in our subconscious mind, like driving and talking and hearing. What about learning from school? Say, for example, you know, when you get older, you don't use it, you lose it. Is, is that kind of like from the subconscious as well? Uh, when we start to lose facility to to do things, Tony, is that what you're asking? Yeah, that's what he's asking. 
Yeah. Well, what what happens is the the flow of energy through uh, throughout our body it lessens and lessens and lessens. And so what happens is some of the grooves within our brain, the things that have been patterned, the energy is not running over those things anymore because there's less energy flow. So then all of a sudden we're not able to access these things. Uh, that That's part of it. And, and if we're talking about things like Alzheimer's or dementia, that's different because Alzheimer's or dementia is actually, think of a balloon losing air, losing its helium. Alzheimer's or dementia is actually the the sentience, our divine intelligence, what we really are, is the slow leaking of that literally from, from our body, like just like the, the balloon losing its air. It's just, it's just a way to go, and that's why people with Alzheimer's or dementia, it's almost like they're not really there. Uh, if anyone who knows anyone, you know, I certainly do have had family members. It's like they're not there, and it's because most of what they really are has already left, and that, that's what Alzheimer's and dementia is. Let's go to Joe in Monterey, California. Hey, Joseph, go ahead. Well, thank you for taking my call, George. Thanks, Joe. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Spina, this, um, this is excellent. I'm glad that you're talking about this. This is an incredible shift in a higher state of being. And, uh, and George, it's, it is very simple. Once you know the technique... You uh, can go into it whenever you choose to. Uh, the thing is that you have to maintain it. And I think uh, his techniques or his uh, little tips of not identifying with the material consciousness because you're no longer part of the material consciousness. And you don't see this world the way it, uh, you used to see it. It's a whole different uh, uh, perspective because you're kind of like above your body, not out of your body, but in the front uh, of your eighth chakra, kind of. I think that kind of describes a little bit of the shift. Um, you can do amazing healing, and I'm, I'm sure uh, he has a lot of different um, anecdotes and, and, and all kinds of things that you can achieve at that level. And uh, time travel, soul travel, all these different things that people talk about, past lives, all that is available in these higher shift states. The super conscious mind is an excellent way to deal with any, anything in life. And if you could maintain it, that's, that's, that's an achievement. RJ, let's get your reaction to what uh, Joe had to say. Yeah, Joe, on, on the money, my friend. Uh, the, 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 the thinking mind, the rational thinking mind, which only uh, is responsible for about 5% of our, our, our reality creation itself, you're absolutely right. Time travel, astral travel, things that I was doing as, as a little kid, all of this become all of these things are part of what we really are. This is part of the larger the larger you. Most of us spend our entire life in the closet in this 5% of the rational thinking mind. Meanwhile, we live in a mansion which is the subconscious and the higher mind. And my friend, you're absolutely right when you when you start to stop relying on the 5% logic and linearity program because we just don't need to do that. True, a supreme intelligence really enters into our life, and that supreme intelligence gives us access to boundless amounts of information. And this boundless amount of information is the key to us transcending and leaving behind all the suffering and the, the ill health and the violence that we do towards ourselves and towards, towards each other. When we start to understand things in a much deeper and more holistic way, all of our talents and abilities also come online. So I'm I'm right there with you. That's ex that's, that's exactly right. And I'm and I'm glad you're you're versed in it too. And one last thing about the process. <clears throat> in the beginning, all of us need the, the highest process is no process, pure flow. Okay, so that's really the goal to be the goal to be in pure flow state. But in the beginning, we all need a process to get ourselves out of the current status quo. So supercharged self-healing has the Ascend the Frequencies Healing Technique, which is a process to heal yourself. And Change Your Mind has the 14-day notebook exercise and the energy diagnostic system, which is a process. But then at a certain point, you no longer need a process. You're in the flow state. You've elevated yourself past a process. Next, Joe, thank you. Next up, let's go to Ed, Charlotte, North Carolina. Hello, Eddie. Go ahead. Hey, uh, th thank you, George. Thank um, you, Ed. I'm, I've got quite, this, this sounds like uh, you're, you're kind of 
preaching what uh, the last person interviewed on about ascension and, and getting there and freeing up. Uh, uh, th- there's a there's a doctor also, uh, George, that you've had on about trying to get 51 percent of all the people to think a certain way. Mm-hmm. And this reminds me of uh, where the comma is: you're not what you think you are, but what you think you are. And I guess does that sort of apply? And I'm wondering what type of. And I, I've I've been healed with uh, vibrations and frequencies of uh, homeopathy, where you shake the, they make the. Uh, tincture and by violently shaking it where it approaches the speed of light every time you go back and forth and so I'm from and that's made a huge difference for me and I'm wondering if you could give any details about how you uh, what you used as you healed sure yeah yeah so <clears throat> the first book supercharged self-healing there's a seven-step process it's 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 these seven things that I found myself doing over and over again while I was in the hospital rehab Uh, overcoming permanent paralysis and disease and all these kind of things. Uh, We are a supremely high vibration. We are literally a fractal of God, an atom of God, a cell of God, however you want to say that. So the key is to attune our body-mind to that core vibration, to the source point. Now, that high vibratory nature, as you know, heals and harmonizes all disharmony. The future of medicine is high-frequency energy. Now, this, and that's how it works, and that's why it's self-healing. It's high-frequency energy. There's nothing here that's actually healing because we limit ourselves to a physical interface, and therefore the energy is associated with the physical interface. Your higher mind and what you really are is God, which has no limitations. It's a supreme vibration. So when we and the exercises get you to attune body-mind, the body automatically has a self-repair and self-healing mechanism. So we have to stop misprogramming it through beliefs, thoughts, so-called knowledge, concepts, that healing is outside of you. All of these things are misprograms, which actually stops the body's innate ability for self-repair and self-healing. So by going within and reconnecting with your higher mind and your true self, that high vibratory state, your body automatically starts putting itself back together. And there's several different, <clears throat> excuse me, several different exercises in the book that help harness that and increase it by an order of magnitude. And it's the same understanding except, except going within. It's the same understanding that Tesla has and he discovered about free energy. It's always there. This high-frequency intelligent energy is always available to us to heal ourselves. All we have to do is open ourselves up to it and allow it to come in. And one of those steps is what I call channeling intelligent energy through your crown chakra, which is the highest chakra still associated with the human form. And when you allow that energy that's already circulating there, it's always there, you allow it to come in through that exercise. It's tangible. You can feel electrical current going through your body. And that was one of, one of the key things that I relied on to unparalyze myself. It's all about high-frequency energy. It's always available to us. But if we keep using the 5% reality creator, which is attuned to just the local environment, we're never going to open ourselves up to the truth about ourselves and the truth about the greater reality. Next up, Penelope's with us in Los Angeles. Hi, Penelope. How you been? Hi. Hi, George. Hey there. Hi. Hi, Arthur. This is a beautiful, great show, and I have a comment and a question. Okay. My comment, um, I hope it resonates with everyone listening. Um, uh, I always often experience in life, I'm like, my soul knew not to go there, but my mind didn't. So it's like our intuition, which I guess is the subconscious, you know, it, it, it always knows what to do, where to go, where not to go. And then, um, but we don't know that consciously until we, you know, uh, either follow it or go against it. And then when we go against it, everyone says, I knew I shouldn't have gone there. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Your soul knew not to, but your mind didn't have conscious access to that information. So that's a comment. And then my question is, um, which I can take off the air, um, when you, when, you know, you, you can, I do a lot of meditation and a lot of self-study and, 
you can know that, like, you know that um, you're worth this or you're worth that or you're able to do this and able to do that and you believe in manifestation, but there's these deep, deep uh, programmings like you're talking about from society or your family or life experiences. Uh, I experience this where they just keep coming up and no matter how much you say, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a great experience, I'm going to manifest this, there's this underlying no, you're not. No, you're not. This deep programming. And my question is, how do you unroot that? Because it just seems to be impossible for me. And because some of that programming was done before you were even aware, when you're like a baby. And so it's all in the subconscious. But so it's uh, no matter how much you say affirmations and everything, if you can, if you feel eh, that that's not going to happen, you're, it's not going to happen. So that's my common question. I'll take my answer off the air. And thank you so much for listening. How do you deprogram, RJ? Yeah, well, the the book literally, Penelope, thanks for the question. The book literally explains how to do that. So literally, step by step. And one of the things I've been teaching lately is what I call vibrational engineering that has to do with manifestation, which is also related to how I manifested my health. The key to all this is you're still believing in the authenticity of the doubting mind. You actually believe it has any weight or sway over your reality. The day that these, these thoughts come up and you literally just observe them with pure awareness, pure presence, the pure presence or the I am will alchemize that low frequency and it will literally disappear and it will no longer have any sway. You won't believe in the authenticity of the doubting mind because that is, as you know, Penelope, that is just your program. It's not you. So you have to just meet it in pure observation and in that pure awareness, that high frequency, that high vibratory state of presence literally alchemizes it and it literally just floats away. And now it's no longer within your mind or within your body of energy. And your, your limitations in terms of manifestation will be gone because it's the doubting mind and your belief in the authenticity of that thought or of that idea is what gives it its sway over your consciousness, which collapses it and then constricts your energy, which makes manifestation in terms of abundance impossible. Absolutely, RJ. Absolutely. And you feel better doing it, don't you? A hundred, you feel like yourself. You feel like an unlimited, divine, perfect, whole, complete fractal of God. And that's the freedom and that's the sovereignty, George. That's the whole key. You, you feel like a million bucks. That's absolutely right. Change Your Mind, that's his latest book that comes out in the morning. Supercharged Self-Healing is one that he wrote back a couple of years ago. His website is linked up at coasttocoastam.com. He's on Instagram and Facebook as well. We will come back in a moment with RJ and take final phone calls right here on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to our final segment. George Norrie here with RJ Spina. RJ, you didn't have the luxury of trial and error. You had to get it right the first time, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, well put, George. Yeah, the, the pressure was on. It was time to step up. But we are our life plan. We never we never design the experiences in this life as to be something that we can't handle. So I knew if I was uh, attuned to who and what I really am, and the remembrance would come back online, and the know how about how self healing and self realization actually works would come back, and it and it did just just in the nick of time. Let's go to the phones east of the Rockies. Roberto's with us in Florida. Hello, Roberto. Thanks for calling. Hi, George. The pressure is on me right now. I need to get it right this time. I was wondering if I can um, uh, take advantage of his expertise. I'm totally blind, and I know that I need to reset, redesign, reset my subconscious mind because I have a, a sleeping problem due to my blindness. I'm in the dark 24-7, and I know I need to just change Reset everything when it comes to my love life, my health life, everything. I would like to just uh, see if I can get in contact with him, see, see if I can just, you know, participate in his program and his services. What do you recommend, RJ? Yeah, please send, uh, send an email to info at ascendthefrequencies.com, and I can get you some information. I would say that uh, start, start with even all the interviews that I do. Because I explain a lot of things just just in interviews. You can just go to YouTube and type in my name. I've probably done a hundred interviews. There's probably well, don't forget though, hours. he's blind now. 
Well, he can hear. Well, he can hear it. That that that's, sure. that's the point. Is me explaining it. And as long as you can hear it, and also the audible book. So the audible book is the explanation of everything in terms of that. You'll be able to hear, and the audible book walks you through everything, step by step. So the the visual is 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 not needed. And there's meditations uh, that I developed too for insomnia, for really everything. I developed a meditation for any any kind of disharmony, and that's available through the. Uh, my supercharged self-healing online course and mobile app. There is a remedy for everything, and it's all contained w- within, and it's just a matter of being able to access that, and hopefully hopefully these works and these teachings help you out, my friend. Why do we need exercises, RJ? Why can't we just do this naturally? We can. We can, George. We're, pro- we're programmed in the opposite way. So what we have, what's become normalized is dysfunction. And that's what I mean about that and that magic trick that we did earlier today about pretend that you just arrived here, yeah. no past, no future. That seems like the simplest. It's very effective. You're immediately brought to the present moment. But if we really dove into that, George, we would start to access all of these natural talents and abilities. But because we're so programmed to be inverted and perverted, we lose contact with who and what we really are. And all of our natural talents and abilities are based upon and held within who and what we really are. So when we become disconnected, inverted and perverted into the ego mind identity, into the subconscious pattern egoic mind, we lose the direct connection to our talents and abilities. And that's why these exercises and protocols are so important because they, they put us back into the driver's seat where we have access to it once again. Let's go to British Columbia, Canada. Catherine's with us. Hello, Catherine. Hi, George. Hi, RJ. I, Hi, I have a story that's real. My family life was extremely abusive, and I lived in my uh, bedroom most of my life, childhood, and I was always told by my father, I'm stupid, I'm just like my mother. I was raised without a mother. <laughs> um, I was never told I love you or hugged. Oh, I never even knew I had a birthday my whole life. It was never um, happy birthday, you know, kind of thing. Everybody gets cards or whatever. Well, we love you, Catherine, just so you know. I know. You guys are so sweet to me. And I thank you for that. And But for some reason, whenever um, my dad would say this stuff, I would hear in my head, you're a liar. And when I became a teenager, um, I, I just said, heck with this. I started singing, and I went into juvenile jails, and I would tell the kids, it's a lie, what you've been told. So what you're saying is so right on, spot on, and it totally set me free. And I see you, RJ, just like a cheerleader, like just cheerleading people on and not to believe the lies but i have one question is there anybody in your family that have totally took in your advice and all this and have have changed their lives anybody in your family rj doing this other than you <laughs> yeah I, my parents uh, got a load of this growing up and i think it was overload for them i i, I would say i only have a uh, an older sister i don't have a big family my father uh, my father left his body a couple of years ago, but I, I would say that my mother and my dad, the the last well, the last ten about ten years of his life, and my mother my mother is still around. Uh, their life has completely changed. Um, they finally decided to adopt some of the things that I say, and uh, they can't believe the efficacy and, and what starts to happen in their life. Yeah, if it, anyone can do it, and yes, yeah, some of my family members. Uh, absolutely have used these teachings and, and they're they're much happier and freer for it and George is right Catherine I I love you and you're absolutely right that these things are lies and I want to add one thing to what you said Catherine anytime someone says something or does something or expresses themselves all they're doing is revealing themselves it has nothing to do with you it's just like when we play cards and we hold our cards up close to the vest so other people can't see. As soon as you speak, as soon as you express yourself, what's really happening is you're simply revealing your cards, 
your beliefs, your identifications, your fears, your wants, your judgments, and you realized, and thankfully you did, it's got nothing to do with you. And I want everyone to hear that. It's got nothing to do with you. What you are is perfect, whole, complete. You're a fractal of God. And don't pay any attention to this nonsense. Let's go to Joe in the Bronx in New York. Hey, Joseph. Go hey, ahead. George. How are you? Doing well. Starting the week. Good. Yep, starting a new week. You're right about that. Um, RJ, I wanted to ask you, for people who have OCD, how do they recover from that? Joe, great question, Joe. I've worked with lots of people. Well, I've worked with people that have had everything, so it doesn't matter. It, it, it will come with the ability to have better control over the energy. So OCD is where the energy, you can't, you can't fo- as you know, right? You can't focus. You're jumping from this, 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 and we can't get grounded and focus. The more that we learn uh, control over our energy, the more that you're going to have command over your attention, and it won't be the other way around. So there's all sorts of and I call these things magic tricks because magic is the accessing and utilization of energies that lie outside of physical sensory perception. And that's the energy that we used to think. Now, once you start to command that energy, you'll have supreme control. OCD and things, things of this nature, they're, they're gone because it, it has to do with not having our ability to have control over our mind and where our attention goes. But the exercises and the protocols will give you the ability to have control over your energy and things like OCD, you'll, you'll now have a, a, a gain of function over it like never before. Let's go to Krista in Eagle Point, Oregon, first-time caller. Hi, Krista. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, RJ, I love your work. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And, uh, yeah, so actually I'm uh, clairvoyant, so I've struggled with psychiatric issues most of my life. I have been able to, like, alchemize, like, severe depression, my alcoholism. I used to have, like, eczema really bad, actually, because, and, and those are all secondary from my CPTSD. Um, so I'm still, I still have the CPTSD, um, and when I am triggered, um, it takes me, like, you talk about holding the awareness of the emotion until it's gone, and, uh I feel like when that happens, it goes way deep into my subconscious, too, and it takes me so long, and I don't, I suffer. I, I understand. Okay, yeah, CPTSD, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, is <clears throat> with the age of narcissism on our planet, it's, it's become uh, quite common. If you, if you don't have supercharged self-healing, the, uh, the book, or you can get the online course either way, I highly, highly, highly recommend it because the, the Ascend the Frequencies healing technique is really the only thing that works for complex post-traumatic stress disorder. It, it has to do with the complete detachment of everything that is going on. Now, because you're so sensitive, you're a clairvoyant, and I, I know, exactly, know exactly what that's like, you, you have to actually have further detachment, and there's something that you can do, what I call a psychic shield. So the image, I'll just give you the image, and if you email me, I'll give you the instructions. 30 seconds left, RJ. Yeah, think about... King Arthur and his castle and the drawbridge, and the, have the drawbridge go up, and now nothing can get, nothing can infiltrate the castle. Think about doing that with your energy, about actually raising up the drawbridge. Nothing can actually enter or cross over unless you allow it, and this will prevent the stuff getting buried within your body of energy and your subconscious mind. RJ, thank you again for being on the show. We'll get back with us when book number three is done. Okay. I will. I will do that, George. Thank you so much for having me. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. R.J. Spina's website linked up at coasttocoastam.com. The name of the book we've been talking about tonight comes out in the morning. Change your mind, deprogram your subconscious mind, rewire your brain, and balance your energy. And for Adam Thompson, Tom Danheiser, Dan Galanti, Lisa Lyon, Lex Lonehood, Sean Latasseur, Stephanie Smith, Chris Burroughs, Tim Benall, Ryan Stacy, Ian Punnett, and George Knapp. I'm George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone.